Welcome back, daters, to On A Date Kind of Nervous Podcast. Hi, friends. How y'all doing? Hey, y'all. So today's episode is all about dating differences. We know that in relationships, everybody is an individual. Everybody (laughs) has preferences um, outside of that relationship. But then when you get into that relationship, you really have to iron out the differences. And a lot of times, those differences, majority of times, those differences need to be ironed out in the dating phase. Yeah. So let's talk about some dating differences. How are you? Let's start with this. Okay. (laughs) How do you typically handle a dating difference in the beginning? Let's say you date somebody for like two months and you guys like have a difference. And we don't don't jump into what some of the differences are. Mm -hmm. But if you guys have a difference, like how do you typically handle it? Um... I tend to be a little bit passive with certain things. If it's not mm-hmm. a big deal to me, I let people just have what it is. It really, honestly, it really just depends. It really, really does depend on the particular issue and how it pertains to my feelings. So if it if it doesn't affect my feelings, if, if I'm not affected by it as much, I can really be passive about it. But if my feelings are involved, I'm a push. I think it's weird because I think in my 20s, Mm. I was a lot more, I think, gentle in my differences where I I don't think I stood as firm Mm -hmm. with my differences. I think I often like molded myself to whatever like my partner wanted. Like if we had a difference in, you know, what color to wear on an outfit, you know, I think I was a little bit more like, okay, well. I use a match outfit. You use I love love a matching outfit. I'm telling you, me and my man, gonna be that 40, 50 year old couple. Go ahead. Both wearing red, looking cute. I love that. And my kids gonna match. I'm gonna love that. But I feel like this, like I always like kind of mold it, you know? And like you often say this at times because you feel like I'm such a traditionalist that there are times where I I don't feel like that. They feel like that too. (laughs) (laughs) But you say that, you know, that I can be a little bit more submissive than you. And I felt like in my 20s, I I feel like I was a little bit more submissive. Mm -hmm. Now in my mid 30s, like I think I stand firm on certain beliefs. Mm And I, I'm i not scared to be single. Yeah. So if me and somebody are dating and we have a difference and it doesn't work out, I'm right. okay. I feel like in my 20s, it was more so like, let me make it work. Let me yeah. force it to work. Now in my mid-30s, it's like if it, it's supposed to be a wheel, it I'm not going to force it to work. I think a lot of people are like that. I think as you get older, in mm-hmm. your 20s, you're really more malleable. But I think as you get older, you're just like... You're firm. You're stuck in your ways. It's it's just hard. like you know the same where they'd be like you know once your parents get to a certain age they just they're they're not open to doing stuff. I just mm-hmm. think that that's how we are with dating. Once you get comfortable with yourself, you have your um your systems and stuff in place. You're not really gonna be interested in changing certain things that make you that that make it for you inconvenient for you. Yeah, and make you uncomfortable. uncomfortable like well. yeah, I feel like you, yeah, we get to a certain point in life where it's just like. Yeah. We know what makes us feel great. Yeah. And if it doesn't make us feel great, why are we doing it? Yeah. I tell you all the time, for me, it's always about convenience. If I'm inconvenienced in any way, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. And I think I need to work on that. But... You do. That's why you're single. I'm just saying. I'm okay. <laughs> okay. Life is good. But anyway, let's jump in. Go ahead. Yeah. So can you date somebody that has different religious views than you? I could. Um... I don't know how difficult it would be because for me, I'm not as religious as I grew up. Um, I've become really, really spiritual. But I think that I'm open to dating people who believe in someone, who believe in a higher power. I don't know if I could date an atheist. Ooh. Um but and I I also don't know if I can date someone so heavily influenced in the church and still in the church because I think we would disagree often on certain things in the church. Like, let's say if we decided to have kids. Um, I, I think I want my kids to have a um, a sense of spirituality. I also want them to have a sense of religion, yeah. even though I'm not that religious. Mm-hmm. But um, I would also want them to have an idea of church, been there, you know, and, and have that. But I don't know if I could date somebody who's really into the church because... Once you once you're into the church as a as a as an individual, when you become a couple, you're gonna want to include that in there. But how about you? I can be a first gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's me, first G. I can oh be a first goodness. gentleman. Oh my goodness! Because you know my love for Jesus runs deep, um, and so I feel like I have to be with somebody, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm never going to compare somebody's spiritual walk with mine mm-hmm. and somebody's, you know 
how religious they are to mine. I'm not going to do that because all of our walks are different. And your walk of Christ is your walk of Christ. My walk of Christ is my walk of Christ. But I feel like as long as you're walking with Christ, I'm a, I'm, I'm happy with that. Would you be able to date somebody who's Muslim? Um, I don't you know. you said religious views. Yeah. So. I, I think that if we're not... I love the fact that dating men, they have some higher power that they look up to. Okay. I do enjoy that. I think dating somebody that may be Muslim, I think I would just have to adapt and learn more about that religion in itself mm. to see if I can really do it. I'm not opposed to it, but I would just have to learn more about that religion because I feel like certain viewpoints, you know, I would have to understand like where you're coming from because of that religious view. Mm. As you said, the older that I've gotten to, I think the more spiritual mm. that I've become. And, and not really put aside the religion, but I'm more so worried, worried about my spiritual life with Christ. And that's really important to me. Yeah. So I look forward to dating somebody that has certain, you know, spiritual values and beliefs. And then when I have children, you know, passing that down to them and then allowing them to create whatever walk or Christ that they want to have as well. Right. So I think it's important to me. I think yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Our next question is, could you date someone with different political views than you? And so if your partner voted for Trump, would you be okay with that? So first part and the answer to the second part. First off, I had to take a pause <laughs> and breathe because each time I hear that man's name, it upsets me. Um, I am on the fence about dating somebody that has different political views than me. Mm -hmm. I think somebody having Trump views is somebody that I really could not date okay. because of the lack of knowledge mm. that I felt like Trump has. And with him, when he led the country, you know, him not knowing certain things, like really, really affected. Look at the Supreme Court. Mm. Now we have all these abortion laws being taken away mm. and somebody's body is not anybody else's body business mm -hmm. so why are you how can you tell a woman that she can't get an abortion for whatever reason it's not, it's right. not our business mm -hmm. so i feel like i couldn't date nobody that had that trump mentality yeah. because we're gonna argue a lot yeah. because my homegirls who are passionate beautiful women you know who are not ride or dies for trump you know they come over to the house and cnn is on and they want to let go and let have yeah. and you come in there with a a make America great again hat, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. And I know, and I can't because, and it's also certain values that Trump has towards, I think, different racial groups. I think towards different genders and certain things I just cannot rock cannot with. Rock with yeah. And I don't want to say that he speaks for the entire Republican Party, but right now with them making him their Republican leader, I think a lot of values that they have within that party are being diminished yeah. because of that person. Right. So I am very much so like, I'm a Democrat slash like liberal. Like I, I'm mm. more so just like, I'm pro a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? I want people to really just pro choice, like live your life the way you want to live your life. Love who you want to love. And I feel like I can't be with anybody that wants to dictate what another human being does with their life. Right. What about you? So I echo a lot of the sentiments that you. you I know, because girl, I was going. I was going. <laughs> I really do echo a lot of the sentiments that you were saying. Um, for me, I consider myself really a progressive person. Mm -hmm. Not not even just the party. Just I, I feel like I'm a progressive person. People can do whatever the hell they want to. Yeah. Um, I'm not really political. I don't really like to talk about politics just because it's, I feel like it's very divisive. But for me. I just feel like his supporters are just very incompetent. And I just don't, I think you, I only specifically exclusively date black men. Mm -hmm. And if you are a black man and you tell me that you voted for Trump, I don't think that what kind of conversation could we follow up and ask? Because I, I have to I ask would you. Leave, I would leave the I date. would have to ask you so many things. How do you feel about this? How do you feel about this? Yeah. How do you feel about this? And I just really don't want to get into a conversation about politics with Anybody. And if I have to, if you know the baselines of who he is as a person, you're just not going to be interested in, I just can't date you. It's foolishness. But you can do whatever you want to do and enjoy yourself. And I'm not going to try to change your mind about nothing because that's not who I am. I, think, I just, it ain't going to work for me. I think all. it's a good question too, like for our daters, you mm -hmm. guys can put this in the comments. Like, when do you think is the appropriate time during the dating phase to have the conversation about your religious views and then about politics? I think that that's a natural conversation that can come up within the first three dates. Mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, y'all asking why people favorite color and their favorite food, ask them about their religion. And Nathan <laughs> hates that question. What's your favorite color? He hates 
it. It's purple, and I like Jamaican food. There you go. Let's skip <laughs> Everybody it. know? Bye. Put that on your Instagram so they know. Nobody asked you that. My favorite color is red, and I love hibachi. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But I, I feel like this though. I feel like for mm-hmm. me, somebody asking like my religious views yeah. within like the first like two two or three days, I enjoy that. Yeah. Um, political views, like I said, it, it really just depends on like what is a topic. Mm-hmm. But you know, me, I'm sorry. A part of me wants to ask somebody like in the beginning of the like dating phase, like, did you vote for Trump? Because I know a lot of people thought that he was going to be this certain type of president. And even if a guy was on a date, date with a guy, he said he voted for Trump. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get into like, well, why? And then would you vote for him again? And if the answer is like, yes, I would, that means you have but not. But what, what would be the point for you if you really stand firm in the fact that- Because I want to argue for... with him. Case in point. Yes. That's it. Yes. I don't really have anything to ask I about that. To... Do you just want to be confrontational? Yes. That's all. What's her if name? You, the, if the you... rep- Representative Jasmine. <laughs> I love her. So if you decided that, if you already know that somebody who voted for Trump is not for you, what is the point of going back and forth with them? If we at a table? Yeah. Because just before I leave, I, I, need to, I feel like I need to say something. This is for my people. Okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> well, since you are okay. a Scorpio, you know, they say the Scorpios have the best sex in the Zodiac sign. Nobody has come on this podcast and confirmed that yet. But we still have a couple more as- episodes. I can't. I can't. <laughs> sex to you is important. I think sex to me is important. The way that you've been framing this and, this and these episodes is just so funny to me. You just you just be throwing that out like I'm some you freaky, that on? freaky you ass that frog. In? Go ahead. Yeah. Go, just go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you think that you can date somebody who is not as sexual as you are. And before you answer that question, <laughs> answer this first. Okay. In a relationship, how many times a week do you think you and your partner should be sexual? I remember saying this to some people and they were flat. they were flipping out. Mm-hmm. I think realistically, I would like to have sex four times a week if I have a live body that's there and that I enjoy having four sex times. with and you are available. And, and this is this is pen- penetration all four times. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Okay. But um, realistically, I don't have sex four times a week. I don't even have, have sex four times a month. So it really... <laughs> why are you gagging? You just... You just no. gotta, <laughs> oh, I didn't <laughs> smile. <laughs> but, you know, realistically, I have a high sex drive. So yeah. I could, like, you know... And especially if my partner is attractive and they turn mm-hmm. me on and they make me feel good, I'm going to want to have sex every couple days. You know what I mean? So... With four times a week being, mm. so that's your base. That's my base. So, uh, yeah. what if you start dating somebody and they're like, four times a month is all I need? How would that make you feel? <sighs> and could you do that? Could you date somebody? Else? I know for me, it, but we would have to talk about that. And this is just being realistic I, and honest. I think I think a, a couple of people are like me as well. I mm-hmm. just I feel like four times a month. I think eventually you do get there with your partner because you're busy. But I think hearing that in baseline, like in theory, just like. Put it, or somebody already putting into into practice. I don't think that that would work for me. I just know I wouldn't be able to date an oral only man because you ain't about to be just sucking and licking up on me mm-hmm. all damn time. But we got to get it popping. You know Can what you I mean? Can you do me a favor? Can you break down to like maybe new <laughs> okay. viewers like what oral only is? Like what? Like what? what it's it's very self explanatory. People who break just like down. just like enjoy oral, you know. Transactions, you know. Is that what top oral is? When they say like I'm a top oral oral top, is it no, oral top? Oral tops are tops who like to suck dick. Okay, and yeah, because I don't even consider that with eating ass. It doesn't. What, can somebody say they're oral bottom, or is it just? <laughs> or is it just? I just mean, like, you can. I think, but people don't really say that because I think the expectation of you being a bottom is that you're ready to submit. So you're gonna suck dick. You're gonna do everything. Get pop. You know, you're gonna yeah. So I think that that that's the expectation. So there's no such thing as an oral bottom. I mean, in theory, there could be in a practice, but people mm. don't say that. It's but, just assumed. Yeah, it's just it's assumed sh- that you on like, your knees. But you know, you be, you get that question nowadays. It's like, oh, you do you suck dick? And you be like, um, because I mean, not to derail from the question. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. But we learned that through a lot of conversations that a lot of people don't have oral transactions. They get straight to so what sex. is for me? But, that's but, confusing. What is the foreplay? A lot of people don't. Well, also, too, I feel like some people feel as though foreplay is for my lover, like somebody that I, or a consistent sex partner. But if I'm going over somebody's house for just like a little, you know, quickie, like we get straight to it. Those are not bottoms that are making that statement. 
because well, speak I, speak from speak for the bottom. I'm not speaking for nobody, <laughs> bitch. Okay, <laughs> but I think that um, I don't think bottoms are, are making that statement. I think foreplay is really essential mm-hmm. in a bottom's performance. Yeah. So if you want them to perform well, you want them to be able to relax and be comfortable in what they're doing. I think that you have to participate or give them some kind of foreplay to turn them on. But um, yeah, well, we, we've we've had conversations with tops who like are like don't like head. Like they just want to. Because y'all can't suck dick, but that's not, <laughs> that's neither here nor there. What was the question that we uh, yeah, asked on the page? Who can't could, suck dick? <laughs> could you date someone who, what was the question that you asked? Oh, my question was in regards to um, sexual differences. Okay. Could you date somebody that had a lesser sex drive than you? We talked about this in the previous episode, and mm-hmm. I told you, I said people's sexual flows and their sex drives have to match. For me, your sex drive has to be uh, not as equal, but at least somewhere there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm not at the I'm not at the top top of of, of people who want to have sex, but I do think that sex is a is a is a great ex, uh, um, ex, exchange and connection it for is. me. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's something that I enjoy having, and I would lo- if I have a partner, I want to have. A lot of it. So yeah. it just, I, I don't think that it'll work for me, honestly. We, to take it back to the question, the first half of the question I asked you, I feel like for me, like I believe that for me to have like a healthy sex life in a relationship, I think like three times a week is like the appropriate. appropriate yeah. And I think us being like two men, I think nutting four <laughs> days a week or yeah. four times a week. I'm okay with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I feel like, I mean, you wake up in the morning, like you said, if you have a warm body next to you, wake up in the morning, you do your normal morning routine, or some people do it at night, you know, you have a little jack off session. That's cool. You know, once or twice a week and then penetration two or three times. I think I'm okay with that. But I think dating somebody that has a lesser sex drive than me, because I don't feel like I have like a crazy sex drive. Yeah, I don't think drive. you have a high crazy sex drive. No. But you are a very orally inclined person. So I think. <laughs> I am a very orally inclined person. Yes. Every episode, you add a new title to my But you list. see, I say it so nice. People not gonna people, <laughs> people not gonna disrespect you. I say it not, so, somebody gonna walk up to me like you orally inclined. I say it yes, so I'm, nice. Exactly. Well, I feel like this. Yes, I am. I like oral transactions, especially with my partner. I feel like, you know, if my partner is walking around the house and he just free balling and we just chilling. You ready to drop to your knees out your back, girl? Shake, yes. shake it like that, Ellie Cat. <laughs> pull my hair back. Put, put a ponytail scrunchy app. Put my hair up and let's get to work. The second part of the question. <laughs> <laughs> Orally inclined. Okay. Wow. So could you so the second part of the question is could you date somebody who has the same um who has the same sexual position as you? Well, with me being versatile, you know, yeah. I could date somebody that is worse versatile. I also could date somebody that is a versatile bottom as well as a versatile top. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I think many people are shocked by that. Um, and I'm Why laugh- would they be shocked? I'm laughing in my head because of you and our other friend that we're just going to leave his name out the podcast. <laughs> we but <laughs> La- Lavelle was here. He was real shocked about that. Which is crazy because I like, I, I thoroughly enjoy butch queens. Y'all know I love a butch queen. I think it's because of your submissive demeanor and nature. I yes. think that kind of... Um, and I could think that that kind of s- sends out that message. But I think with sexual positions, it doesn't matter how you present. I think what you like to do in the bedroom, is what, what you, you like, like to do, do in the bedroom. bedroom. Yeah, yeah. And so. which I so for me, it's like it's very easy to say yes. I can mm-hmm. date somebody in the same position. I can date somebody verse. I can date a verse top. I can date a verse bottom. I can't date a strict anything because I I want to have fun. And I felt like strict tops and strict bottoms is like. It's only one way to do it, and that's it. And sometimes I like to be surprised at what we gonna do. You think it's only one way to do it. Well, you tell me. I think it's the only one way to do it in the terms that you're speaking of. But um, I think let every, the viewers know. I think everybody should play their role and play whatever role that they want to play. So I know could that, you date another? I bottom. know that I could not date another bottom. But you know, I'm a lesbian, so I do like bottoms, other bottoms. But you just won't do a double sided deal, though. No. Nah. Oh my god. <laughs> no, <laughs> because I think I think it's ridiculous um, watching it on camera. But I don't. We'll it looks see. so fun. But um, yeah, I don't think I could date another bottom. Um, but I would date a verse and I would date a a, a full top. I actually prefer to date verse tops because they're a little bit more flexible. If I had Oh, if, so when you say ideally, it's okay. well, because I'm a because I because I'm a full bottom, people think that you know that I'm just insatiable. Everybody just want dick, 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 dick. And that's mm-hmm. not what it is for me. Sex is an experience. I just prefer 
to enjoy myself the way that I do. <laughs> so, and I think sex is a yeah. huge part of a relationship, but I feel like I didn't realize that until mm -hmm. I feel like I got into my thirties. Right. But I also feel like going into my thirties, I knew what mm -hmm. I needed in certain sexual experiences to get what what I needed. Right. And I feel like you can attest to this too. I feel mm -hmm. like our early twenties or even earlier, I feel like was just like figuring out what we need it during sex. Mm. And I feel like once I figure out what I needed, I realized that a lot of my sexual experiences in my 20s were just like, yeah, they were all right. Yeah, because I think when we're younger, especially, you know, being gay men who start out the way that we do, I think that we we tend to believe that our bodies are just for males, other, other men to just have fun and, yeah. and, and stuff. Um, once you start to decide, you know, that you want to have sex for you, you, you'll start to enjoy it. Like for me, I'm, I've had I've had I've had a long a, a, a long sexual career, but for me, I didn't start enjoying sex until I was in my mid twenties because I said, "I'm not just gonna have y'all having fun inside of me. I gotta have a good time." So, you gotta so at what, what age like. was that where you were like, "This sex is a sex that I need. Like this is the good sex that I, I want." I think um, once you start to get men who, when when they're fucking, they are having sex with you to please you mm -hmm. and you are not just a hole for them to just demolish, I think that it changes the idea, especially being a bottom, you know, it changes yeah. the idea of what sex looks like. You know, even Or you don't even have to be a bottom. You could be somebody who bottoms and it can be a different experience for you. So, and then you can, you also have to go into those, those situations um, knowing what you want. You know what I mean? But like I said, I haven't been in a relationship. A lot of the sex that I have is, you know, casual. So, mm -hmm. That's also a different market. For yeah. me, it was, I remember like DC 2016. Oh, you get the dates. Yes. And and he know who he is, the Capricorn. DC okay. in 2016. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Don't think about it. But DC 2016, <laughs> I think, or yeah, it was DC 2016. It was, it was a New Year's trip I did with my homeboys. And I had been talking to this guy, you know, via Facebook. And he happened to be in D.C. at the same time as me and my friends. Facebook is crazy. Crazy, Look yeah. Ahead. But we linked up <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is interesting. You know, at this particular time, time, I think I was more so like a verse bottom than like verse verse. Mm -hmm. And having sex with him on that trip was like when I really said like, yo, I really like ass. Like, I mm. really like topping. Like, I think being in control and then having, you know, not say that he was an experienced bottom, but, I mean, he did the damn thing. And that's when I was just like, in my head, like, this is the type of sex that I want all the time in a relationship, you know? Mm -hmm. Because he presented, like, one way I didn't even know I was going to top him. And it just mm -hmm. happened on the bathroom floor at the Marriott <laughs> Hotel. <laughs> wow you are so cheap <laughs> <laughs> no it was a nice Marriott it was, like, it was, it was the courtyard. suites it was, it was a courtyard first of all that's a Hilton Hotel oh, that's Hilton. you, oh, no, you no, better no, set no, up it probably was a res residence inn no it was not no it was a residence inn because it, it was a huge suite mm. okay people, yeah Switching gears. <laughs> I should do like a Marriott campaign. <laughs> you two can um, have sex on a Marriott floor. <laughs> if you wanted to have children and the person that you were dating was not, would would you stay, would you continue to date them or stay <clears throat> in the relationship? How, how would you we ask to that? I think like currently, <laughs> wow, I was about to tell y'all some tea. I think, no, I could not. Um, I think when I go on dates with guys mm -hmm. and they, Children are important to you. Mm -hmm, children are very important to me. You know that like, I want to be a dad, mm. um, an amazing dad, and I want to share that that responsibility with my loving and amazing partner. So if I go on a date with somebody and they don't want children, it's kind of like, it ain't for me. Yeah. You know, because I feel like by the time I'm ready to have children, like when I'm like 40, 45, you know, I'll, I'll have experienced so many great things in life that like one of the things that I'll need to experience at that age is, is, is being a parent and being yeah. a father. So... I, don't, I couldn't date nobody that didn't want children. Yeah. What about you? I have to think about it because growing up, I wanted children badly. Mm. Like, I really wanted kids. Like, I wanted to be, you know, in a very affirming... I, I was kind of like, like you. Mm -hmm. um, towards the end of my 20s, you know, into my 30s, I just started to think about certain things and seeing the way my life was going, seeing the way life is just life in general. And... I don't know. I'm not going to say I could not be with them because children can still be a possibility for me in my life. Um, forward thinking, I've just not. I just really haven't thought about it much. But um, I think 
if what I will how I'll answer the question is if they wanted to be in a relationship with me and I had this kind of answer about children, yeah. I would respect whatever decision that they decided to make. So mm-hmm. if they said that they need a definitive yes and they couldn't be in a relationship with me, yeah. then it'd be a then then if they chose to like just then I would understand that as well. Or if they wanted to wait around, then I would understand that as well because. I I think children are still in my future, just not in the next 10 years for me. I think that's what makes me nervous because, like, when I date some guys, they'll be like, well, I feel like that's a, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. And yeah. it's like, that'll make me nervous because, like, what if I fall in love with you? And then here I am, 45, we've been together, like, eight years, and you like, I don't want children. And then, like, what do I do then? You know, would, you I, be a, would you be opposed to being a single parent? How much do you want children? I would not be a single parent, but I have a list of men in my life that I would— be amazing co-parents with. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I, but, yeah, I have certain packs with certain men. Like if we're single or, you know, we want kids by the time we're 45 and the opportunity is still there, I have amazing men I can have children with. I actually think that that's a kind of a good idea because I think, um, I, I, I don't think being a single parent, if you can avoid being a single parent, mm-hmm. Try because I just think that it's just really it's a it's a lot it's really difficult yes yes oh, yeah to be I think watching our parents, parents do yeah, it do it I think that's what was like I don't want yeah. you know I don't I don't want that. I want to share that responsibility yeah and I, I don't think I don't think it's okay for I'm gonna say I don't think it's okay I think it 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 takes more than one person to be impressionable on a child so I yeah. think that that would be yeah before we jump into our scenario. Wait, I, I, I think we should ask about the um, age limit because I think it's really important we talk we touch on that. Um. What about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, because the question is, what is, what age limit would you date? And do you think dating older or younger has worked for you? I think this is a really important question. I think we should touch I, on it. Yeah, okay. I think that for me, like, I'm about, like, the five years up, five years down. So I could date somebody that is, like, 30. And then, you know, dating somebody that's, like, 40. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have now gone recently into, like, dating guys who are, like, 45. Um, but... The issue that I'm running into is like the children aspect. Like, oh, you don't want kids for another eight years or so. Like, you know, by that time I'll be in my 50s. I'm not sure if I want children then. So that's the only thing about dating older. But I can date somebody that's like between 30 and 40 is perfect for me. Hmm. I'm not dating anyone under 30. Mm-hmm. Just as just a refusal for me. I'm sorry. Can You're... I say this though? What? That, that, I don't know what the, gener- what the generation under us. The Gen X. No. We, we Z. I <laughs> know oh, they Z. We millennials. We millennials. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what I mean. I think they are. Z? I think they're Z. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, okay. that them twenty five because a lot of them twenty from twenty five to thirty, they bearded, so they you they, they look old, but I'm, they look older. I but, don't want nobody who's not but in they 30s. come. I feel like they when they date somebody that is older, that is like somebody that is like my age or your age, they come a little bit harder. Like they come correct. Like let me take you out. Here's some flowers. Like I feel like they feel like that's that's just I think that's all of that's just really just um I think it's all fluff because when do you, you, but do you think that because they're younger and they want an older like an older guy like they just like they have to like. Yeah, date properly. They, I think they would have to that do are... that properly. But I think you, you could, you will quickly see through that facade. But like I was saying, but I feel like they, they do. People that are in our age group, a lot of times, I think date worse than the younger. I feel like the youngers are like upstage in people in our age group when it comes to dating. You really feel like that? I do. I don't know. For me, I'm not just not dating anybody. Th- under 30 and I'm mm-hmm. not entertaining anyone younger than my youngest brother my brother is 25 years old I don't I wouldn't even entertain oh, I can put you in a, yeah, that young yeah. I wouldn't entertain anybody at that age and for me it's really a different thing because I feel like in our community there's just this kind of thing with older men trying to always like preying on younger kids mm-hmm. and um We'll touch on this maybe a few episodes late later, but like you know, for me starting out as young and participating in that kind of life as an adult, I just kind of feel that that's just not, I that that's just not a good way to to do that. And I just right. like yeah, I'm just not interested in touching anybody that is not an adult, in my opinion. Okay, from how I see it, yeah, you know. I can see that because I have a nephew. My nephew, yeah, and nephew's 24, and I couldn't imagine talking to somebody like my nephew's age. Yeah, it just, yeah. okay. So scenario before we wrap. Okay. What temperature do you <laughs> prefer your house on? And if your partner preferred the temperature of the house on a different temp, would that impact your relationship? I think it really will, honestly. I don't know. I think it really will. Listen, I'm I get I'm hot. Look at you now. Fan. I, be, I have a fan <laughs> under there. Like I be 
hot. I sweat when I sleep. When it's too hot, like I just can't. Like mm-hmm. sixty eight in the winter, and I be having a fan blowing on what me. What is too. on the summer? In the summertime, bitch, it's on sixty right now. Oh my god! <laughs> like I don't play that. I need to come to your house with a snowsuit on. <laughs> like I don't play that. Um, I, I don't know. I think if I so if your man liked the house on seventy five, would they be a compromise? I will throw him off my balcony. Oh, Are you, and you live me? on the top floor. Okay. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> 75, you know how hot that is? That is crazy. No, I ju- it just probably wouldn't work for me. If I would have to have two fans blowing directly on me at all times, at all times I would have I would have to have a, a handheld one attached to me too. I got to get hot. So, no, I don't know. What about you? <laughs> I keep my house, I think even like year round, I keep, we live in LA, but I keep my house on 75. Because Jay, like, you, don't, Jay 70, you don't keep your house at 75. I come over to your house all the time. You don't keep your house when at 75. When I know... Do you know what 75 is? It's between 73 and 75. You when, cannot keep your house at 75. You be cold at my house? I don't be... No, I don't be cold. And I don't be hot. I, I don't be hot either. That's what I'm saying. That's what... But when, when I know I'm having... Like, if it's just me by myself... 75. 75. And I'm good. Because half the time I'm in, like, sh- booty shorts and a crop top. But, like, if I'm having company, I will turn the air on and deal with it while I have company. But as soon as y'all leave... It's on 75. I've gotten into it, you know, living with two guys, two men before. I've gotten into it with them about, like, keeping it air. I can't keep the air on 68. That's too cold for me. So my perfect temperature for the house is between, like, 73, 75. But, you know, that's what I love. Most people are very warm-blooded, so we all like to be cold. So I don't think I'll have a hard time finding men. Men. Who are it's me. I'm going to have a hard time finding men. It's going to have the issue. Yes. I'm um, having it now. Because even when, like, I have company over, they're like, oh, my God, um... This place nice. I know it got air. Yeah, it got air. Okay. <laughs> but I like my show 75. First of all, they real passive aggressive. <laughs> I know they got air. Okay. First of all, Jay wrote this question, but I'm going to give it to y'all anyway because it's funny. <laughs> if you were your partner live are living together in LA and um, he got his dream job in Boise, Idaho. I don't know why the hell he would choose that. Boise, would, Idaho. Boise. Why would you would you move? What is in Boise? Boise, I did a contract there for work for three months. And it was absolutely amazing. Shout out to my people in Boise. Are Boise. there black people in Boise, Idaho? Yes. It's a college town. So it's lit. Like, it's a really I good I just job. always think of, like, when I hear Idaho, I think of, like, cornfields and, and like, potatoes. cows with fat asses just running, running around. around. <laughs> running yeah, it was around. that. But they, like, they have, like, a city, like, too. Boise is lit. Um, but, I mean, I tell you this all the time. If I met a man, he was, like, moved to Salt Lake City. As long as he allowed me to keep my cute place here and... He had his plan. We have. You see, even there. these words that you use just just is very triggering to to my lack of vulnerability. Allowed is crazy. Allowing you to do what? I mean, we're in a relationship, <laughs> so it's like if I'm moving for somebody, it's like I told you, it's like we, I, it's a ring on my finger, or it's a you just committed, committed completely. It's committed partnership for me to move. You know, but I do admire that love is really at the forefront of your goals as a person. I think that you know you're very open, so I think that you'll find what you're looking for. Yeah, whenever it comes, if, in a rush. I'm having a good time. Yeah. It's summertime. I have yeah. been. Kicking it. Yeah, we we gonna fall out real soon. <laughs> because I'm having, like my man. Cause I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm having, I'm having um, fun, but I'm ready whatever. I'm not moving to boys out of hoe. I don't think I know. I don't know why. Mm-mm. But I feel like if you met a man in Dallas, you would. Well, I so I have a remote job, but mm-hmm. I don't know how long I'm gonna be working, you know, in the field that I work in for a very long time. But I what I will say is I, I'm okay traveling back and forth. Like two weeks with you, come home two weeks, two weeks. I think that ideally that's my kind of like thing. Mm-hmm. So maybe if I can, I would probably go to Boise see, and hang out for two weeks, come home, but go again, come back again. But to live there permanently, I don't know. I guess that's like, I, we're going to talk about this either at this season or next season about long distance dating. So I think it's like a good time to like, we can pick this we conversation go. back up. We got one more scenario before we wrap. Go ahead. We should? Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should wrap this. We should wrap. We got to wrap. We got to wrap. All right, y'all. Well, daters, thank y'all so much for tuning in on a date kind of nervous podcast. Dating tip as we close out. Oh, my God. I didn't think of one today. I got one. I would Go say ahead. like, I think it's yeah, fun. with dating differences, I think just make sure you have a conversation. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing when you have your like dating differences. Yeah. Just make sure you like sit down and have like honest, transparent conversation and also listen. Yeah. Like listen to what they're saying. Yeah, stay on your ground and be and don't be flexible on things that really mean a lot to you. Like if it's something that you know that 
in the in the long run, it will make you uncomfortable. Stand your ground in it. It's not worth it for you being passive in the moment just to have a man. I agree. I agree. And that's it. All right, daters. We'll see y'all <laughs> next time. Make Thank sure y'all like, share, subscribe, comment. And send us some good questions on the yes. Instagram. Go ahead. Bye, y'all. Bye. 